Amen. I'm excited. I am excited about the Lord this day. Before we get started, I would like to take this moment and say a prayer, thanking the Heavenly Father today for an awesome day of rest. Thanking that today that this is the day that we commit to him. This is the day that we have so, so, so much waited on. I know I have, and I'm sure and pray that you have too. The day where we get to commune with the Father as we do every day, but this is the day that we set aside just to love up on our God and rest in his presence. So Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank and I just give you praise, honor, and glory. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing right now, God. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you will open up the airwaves, oh God, and Father, that the people of God that will hear this word today from the heart of the evangelist, Lord God, that it will be good food for them, that it will fall on good ground, God. Father, as you have given it to me to digest, to dissect, to be able to enjoy, I'm praying as well, God, that they will be blessed in Jesus' name. Come Holy Spirit, reign, rule with us. Teach me your spirit how to teach in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, everyone. I promise I won't be long, but I have a word that the Lord has given me um, some time ago on wellness. As you'll see my topic, and I hope that you can see my PowerPoint screen, because not only is this a word from the Lord, it's also something that the Lord is teaching me about wellness. I understand one thing, that I first become the partaker of the fruit before God allows me to share this, what I have experienced. Um, and these days now I'm learning how well I need to be both in my, in all parts of my body, my mind, my spirit, and my soul, my body, my spirit, and my soul. And I understand that the wellness that God is talking about was not me being on no physical diet to lose a hundred pounds, but the thing that I need to do, yes, to be able to amp up my spiritual, amp up my whole body, soul, and spirit that I had to begin to dissect the word of God. And that today, this morning, beloved, is what I'm going to do. I am going to dissect the word of God through the scripture that he gave me in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. That blessed my soul when I looked for the word whole, wholeness, wellness, being completed both in all parts of my body, my mind, my emotions, hallelujah, physically, intellectually, financially, and there are so many dynamics on the wellness wheel, for there are eight of them that we can dive into, but today, I'm going to talk about the ones that are described in the Bible in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. If you will go there with me, open up your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. Amen. When you have it, thumb me up. Throw me emoji. I'm going to put my PowerPoint in. Okay. We're going to be dealing with wellness, spirit, soul, and body. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and make your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and make your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. While I had begun to study wholeness and this scripture that came to mind while the Lord was dealing me with wellness, I had to go back and study that our body, human being, we are made of a triune. The triune is that we are made of a spirit, we have a soul and we have a body. But what the Lord is saying here and then his word that he was speaking to me is that I need you whole. Whole is defined as being complete. It is, it is totally complete. That's what it says. You say, sanctify you completely 
and may your whole. See, God wants to sanctify us and complete us. And how does he does that? First of all, in Genesis, it says that in one, he created us, first of all, in his image. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Many theologians would believe that we are attract, that God was a trinity. I remember in my Pentecostal church, we were learning the trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What we understand is that those are those are offices that God represents. He holds those are those are some of the things that He do, but He's still yet one. As Jesus said, "Me and the Father are one." Jesus sends the Holy Spirit in that of Him. They are from the Father. So we talk about the body of a human being. We have three entities. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a physical body. So I want to talk about some of those things about being whole. I realized in the course of a certain time in my life, I was not as whole as I thought I was or I should have been. So it brought me to the scripture where we talked about the woman with an issue of blood. In Matthews 9, 20 through 22, and I'm reading out of the New King James Version, if you're following me with your Bibles. Turn there, please, and read along. This blessed me in so many ways because I, like this woman, I too, for numbers of years, had an issue. But I want to read what she is said in Matthew, recorded to the gospel. And suddenly, a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. Hallelujah. The 21st verse said, for she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. Look at that there. I shall be made well, whole. But Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter, your faith, oh my God, has made you well. And it says, and the woman was made well, whole from that hour. If I could, I speak from the heart of the evangelist and I will ask the question, are you whole? See, what we understand sometimes in order for us to become whole, and as this woman, the opposite of that is broken. There was some brokenness here I see as I begin to read the word of God, for a woman to bleed for 12 years, I think we had enough when we got to do one week out of a month. Here is a woman who bled for 12 years. In our calendar month, that's 12 months, that's 52 weeks, multiply that by 12. And in the old days, back in the biblical time, if that was considered when a woman had her menstrual, it was considered to be unclean. So here now, not only is she flowing 12 years, she's also considered a cat's out. I have to believe that that was an emotional state. Now for her to be completely whole, this here had to dampen something about how she feel about herself, how she thought about herself, how it depleted her very being because here now she can't even be social because she has an issue that she can't do nothing about. And as I was studying the wholeness of that, knowing that something had to be broken, I believe right here, she was broken. She was broken. Broken means fractured or damaged, no longer in one piece or working order. Not only was she broken, but to bleed that length of time, she had to been weak. It had to make her body weak. What I love about the verse in the next one, in the 21st verse, but she said to herself, her own encouragement herself was, if I only may touch his garment. Now, I want you to know something that sometimes in order for us to be complete, 
We got to know who we are and who we need to go to. Sometimes we go to other people for opinion. We go to people for their advice. But I want you to know that this woman of God realized that she needed to touch the hem of Jesus. Because sometimes that's where our healing comes from. That's where our wholeness is. Our completeness is no one completes us but God. God said in the beginning, he said he made us in his image and in his likeness, he created us. That's who we are. So therefore, when we need completeness and we feel broken or we feel like we don't know what's going on, we need to seek the Lord our God for the answer. So it's only through him that we will be made well. Mentally, in her emotional state, she needed God to heal her spiritually and to heal her physically. Because why? She's made up of a human being, triune. She has a body, a spirit, and a soul. So she's going through some issues, not only in her body, but her mental and her spiritual, I believe, as well. But I thank God that something that reached to me was that she had enough faith here. As the next verse said, but Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith, her spiritual. Here to me, no matter what her physical was going through, no matter what her emotional was going through, I like this because something was intact. Her spiritual was. Because she said, the daughter, he said to her daughter, your faith, her belief made her well. She could have walked around in a slump. She could have been in an I pity story. She could have been in, oh, woe is me. She could have been left at the side of the, not pressing her way. But she said, even as Jesus, if I could just touch the hem of his God, I know, I know, I will be made whole. I will be well. Her tenacity her determination because there was crowds of people hovering around Jesus as he walked through the city. But this woman says, I don't even have to get in his face. I just want to touch his hand. And that beloved is just a measure of faith that she had. And it says, the Bible says, if you have a grain of a size of mustard seed, you can say to any mountain, be thy removed. If you got faith, just the size of a grain of a mustard seed, that ain't talking about a whole lot. That's talking about just a little bit. A tiny, you have to be seen on a microscopic lens in order to understand what a micro little size mustard seed looks like. Hallelujah. But she said, and I repeat, I shall be met well. There's an encouragement moment in here that I believe her spiritual man, because see her spirit was intact, y'all. Hear me now, because see her spirit kept driving her. See, when I understand that God sets in wellness in our mind, our bodies, and our soul, sometimes we got to bring our mind into subjection to the things of God. We sometimes got to tell ourselves, me, Belinda, you got to get your act together, honey. Ain't no time sitting here worrying about what you got to do, what you can't do. And it ain't, I can't do this, I can't do that. What I need to do is get in tune with the spiritual which is in me. Who is God? God is a spirit. He lives in me. The hope of glory. The king of glory. The Holy Spirit that reminded her. See, now we're in the Old Testament, and this is the New Testament. You may not hear a lot about the Holy Spirit, but I have to believe that this woman was in touch with her spirit, the Holy Spirit, because of her words. If I could just touch. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things that is not seen. But here, this woman had faith. Let me go on. So I came up with three points. And three points that out of all that I took away while I was studying is that in order for me to be whole, in order for me to be well, I had to first define my brokenness. That's number one. I define my brokenness because if if if, if something is whole and it, it gets broken, then you know that it it was eventually it was whole because it's broken. So that means it was whole. It got broken. Now I need to get it back together. You see, something that I learned is that 
God understand his original design. And that was that his, our life experience was sometimes will break us. Sometimes we got to know that our perfection, what God perfected in our lives to be is what he desires. Jeremiah 29 and 11. We are all familiar with that scripture. A lot of times we lose, use it in quote, but he was talking to Jeremiah. He said, I know the plans I have for you. Those plans to prosper you, you know, the, those things to make sure nothing harms you. I want to believe my God's words that he spoke to those men and the prophets in those days are still applied to me because why I am a, 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 I am adopted by the Lord and my God and I am now a daughter like she was. And he said, daughter, huh, your faith has made you whole. But we must stop wasting time and energy looking for wholeness in the wrong places like romance, addictions, or even careers. Second Corinthians 12 and nine says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. You understand? So that, cause it's true, you cannot fill a round hole with a square peg. So we must realize my first point that nothing and no one except God has power to complete you as a person. Psalm 73 and 26 said, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion, portion forever. Hallelujah. Second point, you must give up unrealistic expectations for others to meet needs that only God can meet. Hear me now, beloveds. We, this woman of God, this woman with this issue of blood, gave up there. I mean, she went to many doctors. The Bible, we read on, says she spent all of her earnings trying to find out if she can find out, if they can find out what's wrong with her. Sometimes they don't have the answers. And when you have exposed all options, and if you don't consult the Lord thy God at number one, then I think this will be a time to go to the Lord thy God. For it says we must give up unrealistic expectations. And I'm not talking that doctors can't do because God uses doctors, though. That's not what I'm saying. Unrealistic, meaning things where you sit around thinking it's going to happen and it's going to drop out the sky. It's like getting rich and all the money going to flow out the heavens. That's not what it means. Unrealistic expectations for others to meet that need. I'm not waiting for somebody to lay their hands on me and tell me that I've been delivered and healed. Understand me. I am going to God because only he can meet that need. Hear what John said in 15 and 11. I have told you in this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Point number three, you must not calculate your worth based on your appearance, your job performance, success in a certain relationship, or any other than our identity as God's beloved child. Second Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith. That's why the woman with the issue of blood was able by her faith to be made whole. All she needed to do was reach out and touch the hem of God's, the hem of his garment, but it was her faith. He said, daughter, he recognized her identity and her faith was in him, God, our father. And he said, daughter, he called her daughter. Your faith has made you whole. And the Bible says at her, at that point, her whole, she was made whole at that hour. Ah, all that blood that was flowing dried up. I believe right there at that point, she was restored in her body physically. She was restored mentally. No more emotional tide being cast away from people. Now she can get around people and be sociable. But her spirit was intact all the time. Wellness is not just about 
being complete just in my body. I remember the Lord spoke to me. He said, Belinda, this is not about you dieting and losing 100 pounds. This is about you staying completely whole in me. Everything I want, everything I need, everything I could ever hope for is in God. I look to him, the author and the finisher of my faith. I look to him because he's the one who has the answers. I've gone to the doctors. I've gone and I waited and I sometimes even look for somebody to speak a word over me. But God said, this is not the way. This is not the way. So I rested in God. I trusted in him. I stopped worrying that I didn't have any children. I stopped crying every month when I didn't have a baby. And God gave me peace. He gave me peace. He's healed me more than I can say. He's healed me emotionally. I cried all day. I remember him drying up my teeth and saying, don't worry about it, Belinda. It's not going to happen. Just, just don't worry about it. Sing, he told me. How can I sing if I'm crying? I can't. I sing with joy unto the Lord. I wake up with songs on my heart and in my voice because I love to sing because the joy of the Lord is my strength. He gave me songs. So I thank God for that. So God wants us whole. He wants us well. And I talked about brokenness. We are God's original design. And now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit. I like that. Your whole soul. I like that and your whole body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's where the spiritual man took a hold of the revelation. God said, I'm not talking about you losing 150 pounds. I'm not talking about your mental wellness, your mental brain strain and things that's going on that you worry about. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about getting in whole body with me, staying in connection with me, staying in commune with the father with me. Talk to me, beloved. I need you to hear what I'm saying to you because by the time I come back, I need to find you blameless. Hallelujah. Preserved, blameless to the coming of our Lord. He's coming back for a church. He's coming back for the body, us, the body, the body, that triune body, the body where our minds are right, our spirit is right, our souls are right, in alignment with his will and his purpose for our lives. He's coming back not for fragile and fragments of us. He's coming for us to be completely whole in every part of our body every part of our minds. I couldn't stress it every part of our spirit. I couldn't stress it as much as I know that his plan for us to live an effective life while we wait, listen, because he ain't, it says until he come, he's coming. But while he is on his way, preparing to come back for his church, the body, the bride, he's coming back. And he wants us to be complete. He wants us to lay our brokenness at his feet. He wants us to take our concerns to him, whatever it is that is causing us to become broken. God wants to mend it and he wants us whole. I pray in the name of Jesus that this word has blessed you. That's from the heart of the evangelist. And that's all that I have, that the Lord our God will make you whole that he will make you well. And no matter what it is, no matter what it is, I will beseech you therefore, brethren, right now, my sisters, to lay it at the feet of God. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing that he can't do because he can do all things but fail. Amen. He wants you complete. He wants you whole. I ask you to give it over to Jesus today. If you know the Lord thy God, is able to do all things above that which you can even ask or think. I believe and I challenge you now, take it to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer and say, God, make me whole. Make me whole again. Because see, if you're broken, you got, he was already, you already whole. Ask him to make you whole again. See, life comes along and it causes things to happen and it cut, some things happen to break us. But see, they don't break us that we cannot get back up, clean it all up, get back on our grind and get back in the race because this race is not given to the swift. 
Neither is given to the strong, but is given to those that will endure it to the end. He said that we will stay sanctified. So he give us his peace. He sanctifies and completes us so that we can be whole in our bodies, in our spirit, and in our soul. Amen. So like the woman at the issue of blood, I pray that your faith will be ever the more increased in the God that we serve. Because this series on wellness for me is just a tap of where God is taking me in my walk with him to stay completely whole. And whatever's causing me to have a frag fracture or brokenness, I have to take it to the Lord my God and ask him to make me whole again. Hallelujah. May we bow our heads and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, oh God, for this word. Thank you, Lord God, for the wellness and the wholeness that you have made us to be. For we are made in your image and in your likeness, and there was you designed us. And the perfection in God that we are, that you completed us. So Lord, we ask, oh God, if there's any brokenness in us today, God, if there's any issues, oh God, that we have not dealt with, God, we bring it to the altar and we lay it at your feet. Like the woman that pressed through the crowd. And she said, Lord, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, hallelujah, I know I will be made whole. I know I will be made well. God, I know that it's some things that we cannot even tackle on our own. They are beyond, they are always above us, oh God. But there's nothing over you. There's nothing more that we can do, God. But we take it to you, Lord God, knowing that you are our King. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. You are our healer. Heal us, Lord, from anything that has broken us, God, and make us whole, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Beginning in our minds, in our body, our souls of our emotions. God, the seed of our emotions. And God, may the spiritual man be more empowered, given more strength that we can conquer those things that have been placed at our feet or on our table. We thank you, Lord God, and we give your name all the praise, the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, I thank you for the viewers. Thank you, Lord God, for those that have joined me on Zoom this morning. May God be the glory for the things you do in their lives, I pray. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Ha. Thank you. Yes.